Hello, everyone. We are going bird watching. Glad you could join us. Whether you're watching this one live or on the replay, glad that you stopped by. We're going to go look at some previously recorded, just moments ago, actually, footage from the Bird Garden YouTube channel feeding station right here in beautiful East Tennessee. We're, we had a little activity. The birds are a little slow to get started because I was out there installing a new camera mount just for this type of live stream. I hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment if you do. If you have suggestions as we go, please make them. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to tell us what type of feature videos you'd like to see in the future. Perhaps a species highlight or something like that. But let's go out to the feeder and start bird watching. Here is the Bird Garden YouTube channel feeding station. And right now, as I mentioned, I spooked the birds while I was installing camera uh, and audiovisual equipment. I've turned the sound off. There we got some coming in. That was a, you'll see in a minute. I won't spoil it for you. I've got the volume off because the feeding station is in close proximity to a water feature. And it's just kind of a, it's nice when you're just listening to the water, but the background noise while you're trying to bird watch gets a little monotonous. So we're going without the sound at the feeding station today. I'm going to enlarge that because we're going to have our first guest here soon at this old feeding station. You can see lots of variety of food there. The two feeders on the left side of the screen are the same because exciting news. The feeder on the left was a large open cage type feeder with suet balls in it. You see the suet balls in the feeder on the left. Those are pepper infused suet with insects and mealworms. So the woodpeckers and the bluebirds enjoy those. You also see a couple on the right side of the tray feeder. Well, we had a, a mammal guest, uninvited of course, this, that decided to abscond with our suet ball feeder and yes, it was a tremendous sized black bear, six feet tall, had its way with our suet ball feeder left. But because this is a 24 seven live stream feeding station, I'll make sure there is a link to that live stream in the description following this live stream. We were able to capture um, the bear uh, right in the act. Now, uh, what was interesting, a little bit frightening in hindsight, is the bear was at our feeding station tearing things apart at 10 p.m. Family in the living room, just feet away from the feeding station, dog asleep on the, the rug at our feet, never knew the bear was there. Woke up the next morning, feeding station destroyed. I mean, the you can see now, if you look closely, the black pole um, behind the tray feeder is at an angle. It's because it's bent. You'll understand why if you watch that bear video. It's it's a short, by the way. I'll probably make a feature length video of that in the near future, but the short is available now. Big bear tearing down the bird feeder. I think you're going to enjoy that. So that's why we have those suet balls right by that northern cardinal that just dropped in. That's a beautiful bird. We're so fortunate to have plenty of those year round. They keep us company all year. I love to film them in the winter time when we have a snow, just a beautiful bird. Now here's something from the did you know file. Uh, maybe you can learn something here today. The Cardinal has been adopted by seven states as their state bird. I've got them written down to share with you because I can't memorize them all. It's going to require these reading apparatus here. Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, North Carolina, Ohio, Virginia, and West Virginia have named the Northern Cardinal as their state bird. And with good reason. That's a, a range where it probably is residential year round. And it's a stunning red bird. It has a brilliant red crest. That's where it gets its name from the um, senior clergy of the Catholic Church, the Cardinals, they wore the red caps. Oh, there's the Eastern Bluebird coming in. Now, <laughs> we've got a red bird and a bluebird at the feeding station. It doesn't get much more colorful than that. The Eastern Bluebird, uh, this is the male 
brilliant orange chest, the stunning blue back, the female similar, a little drab with the white throat. You can see he's got some undertail or he's got a white belly. And just look at him. This is out there in that bright sunlight posing. Thank you so much. I've named him Mr. Green Jeans. That's not right. <laughs> I was thinking of my childhood, Captain Kangaroo. It's not Mr. Green Jeans. It's Mr. Blue Jeans. Mr. Blue Jeans, G-E-N-E-S, and his wife, Jordash, uh, may have taken residency. And uh, just off screen, we have a hanging ceramic birdhouse. And they're in and out of that thing. I can't tell if they've built a nest or if they're still just checking out the neighborhood. But he's a gorgeous bird. Look at that. Eastern bluebird once on the endangered species list. Thanks to uh, my state, Tennessee, and many others, uh, we were able to get programs started, including bluebird trails and installing bluebird cavity nest boxes all over the place. Brought the population of the Eastern bluebird back to a healthy and sustainable level. Very fortunate to have not lost that bird. It would have been a tremendous and terrible loss. So we talked about the suet balls. Here we've got a break in the action. Um, you see the, the, the match set of feeders on the left. Far left, we have suet balls. And then the next one moving right, the three tray feeder. We keep um, a wild, uh, Wild Birds Unlimited pepper infused seed mix in those either. Well, sometimes we use one called a fiery feast and sometimes we use the pepper infused no mess blend. So one is just all sunflower hearts. No, no hulls, no shells, no mess, no bacteria buildup under the feeder. Uh, it's a little more expensive, but we need the pepper infused food because you you can't see from this angle you can see the fence just behind the fence is acres of wilderness so we have squirrels and raccoons and as i mentioned black bear um possum that come to the yard uh frequently and if you look at some of the older videos i can maybe get a link in the description you'll see some raccoon damage to the feeder. So we've gone to all pepper infused food to deter the mammals. So now the birds, they don't mind. That pepper doesn't bother them at all. There's a little Carolina chickadee. We've got the Carolina there. Oh, there's his buddy. A couple of Carolina chickadees on that pillar feeder. That's a, that's a, the no mess blend held together by a gelatin. Um, it's got the pepper in, infusion in it. We featured the Carolina chickadee in a how to identify birds video. I'll definitely make sure there's a, there is a link to that in the description following this live stream. You can check that out. It's a very popular video. It's become the most popular video on the channel, the bird garden channel. Um, over 4,000 views. Is that right? I may be thinking about another video. I think that's right. So thank you very much. If you've already seen that, if you haven't, um, these chickadees are difficult to distinguish between their close cousin, the black cap chickadees. So we go into a little bit of detail there with some good video and photography to help you identify the Carolina chickadee, which is common here in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Um, on the feeder beside the one the birds are on, the, the red capped feeder, that was a, uh, it's a seed, maybe a mix, maybe all sunflowers. It is heat infused, pepper infused, and it was originally in the shape of a squirrel. So it was a decorative seed block. And the birds are crazy about all of that stuff. I've gone through several of these pillars, several of these shapes, many suet balls, um, and Everything that we get from Wild Birds Unlimited that's pepper infused. By the way, this is not sponsored. I'm not, I'm not paid to say this. I use the food first because my birds love it. Second, because it does deter the mammals. I need that to happen at my feeding station. And, and lastly, it doesn't make a mess. It really doesn't. The birds eat it. The seed that spills from the feeder or the trays, there's morning doves on the ground every day as well as sparrows. 
Uh, we'll probably see some sparrows uh, before long here in the tray feeder. They love to come up to the tray and eat as well. And I don't, I'm seeing this as you're seeing it for the first time. I installed the camera mounts and then uh, came inside, let the camera do all of the work without me disturbing the birds. So I'm not sure what it caught. I've got about 30 minutes of footage here. I thought that would be a good time for us to start this daily checklist at the uh, on a live stream at the feeder. Again, the feeder is live. You can check it out right now or 24-7, 365. But this is previously recorded just before we went live here. So uh, there is a bird on the pillar feeder with the green cap, and it's behind the pillar feeder. I can't I can't tell what it is. He'll make a showing. He'll come back around. We'll keep an eye out for him. And we were just talking about the types of food. Now, the, the feeders are also from Wild Birds Unlimited, not sponsored. I just love the product. I've used other products. This is a product that works so well with our feeding station right now. Um, the feeding tray with the bird garden sticker on it also wild birds unlimited product uh, as well as a suet feeder in the center and that's all an, an eco blend of plastic formed together recycled material there are removable trays easy for cleaning and replacement in the bottom of that large tray feeder and actually i'm not sure if that's marketed as a tray feeder it may be a seed catcher that they recommend for under hopper type feeders um, that gives the seed a second chance to be eaten by the birds before it hits the ground and becomes, you know, fair for whoever's passing by. But I love it as a tray feeder. So that's how we have it installed here. And I, I guess we'll have to find room in our feeding station for a hummingbird feeder before long. We always get the ruby throated hummingbirds coming through about this time of year. And occasionally, um, a rare hummingbird, you know, will come through. We had rumors of a calliope hummingbird last year. There's been a black chin hummingbird. Of course, rufous hummingbirds, typically we see those in the fall and occasionally they overwinter here. So we're going to have to work out that. We do have, again, just out of frame here, uh, a bird watering drip misting system at the top of that bank that was very popular last summer. And we do have some feature video content of that little water feature that makes all the difference. If you're trying to attract birds to your yard, add water. Uh, if it's a dish, a Frisbee turned upside down. If you want to, uh, matter of fact, I've made a video how to attract birds in less than one minute. There are some great ideas, bucket lids, dishes, any water is good for birds. If it's um, if it's agitated, if it has water dripping into it or, um, stirred around, uh, if you've got a, a pump or something that can agitate the surface of the water, that seems to be a real attractant. Um, we just had tremendous success with each of our water features. We have a, it's a large water feature, um, just out of frame here in the backyard that the birds love to get into the shallow parts. I, and I've got a video of birds by the hundred just bathing in this little stream and drinking all and they seem to get along they love the water so much that it's time to be social it's like the reminds me of a public swimming pool everybody get in the lifeguards on duty concession stands open right over here <laughs> we're running a water park for birds all summer and we don't mind. We love the birds. They keep us company. Obviously, we go to fairly great lengths to try and make them happy. Here comes another Carolina chickadee uh, with his buddy. Now, a lot of times, the chickadee and the titmouse, they'll come in, grab their seed, and go somewhere else and eat it. So these two, uh, one has already left. They they stuck around there for a second and gave us good looks. Yeah, okay. All right, there they go. They're a little wiry. Now, and I, oh, there's our hairy woodpecker, the male. See the little red spot on the back of his head indicating that is the male. Uh, and he loves to just wear that pillar out. Now, we've also had a hairy woodpecker visiting, which looks so similar to the downy woodpecker. But if you ever get a chance to see them side by side, 
I'm going to run out of space in the description if I keep dropping these links, but I'm happy to put the link about the identification uh, tip that I use to determine whether it's a downy or a hairy woodpecker because they're so similar uh, in appearance. And here's the downy. This is the male. I see we got somebody in chat over here now. Hello, Birdomania. How's it going? Welcome to the live stream. Glad you could make it. We're just talking about the birds that I recorded at the bird feeding station just moments before we went live. So this is pre-recorded. The uh, feeding station is live. There is another live stream link. You can check it out as well. But now we've got an American goldfinch in here and these guys are really, we, we had them all winter. We had a nice flock of American goldfinches all winter. They are really coloring up. Now, I can't tell if this is a, a semi-ornate female or if this is a male that hasn't started transitioning yet, but we do already have some lemon yellow male birds at the feeder. I hope that one comes by during this stream so you can see. Well, there's one that's 50% lemon yellow. So maybe we should just start making a wish list. Drop, drop up there in the chat, whatever you'd like to see. Leave a comment. Maybe, maybe the birds will hear our request and honor them. So we've got the American goldfinch, the, the downy woodpecker male. And listen, this is a slow time at the feeder. Okay. We're talking about 11 o'clock after 11 o'clock when things start slowing down. So this is the slow time at the feeding station. And we've already had how many, we're keeping a checklist. We had the Northern Cardinal. We had the Carolina Chickadee. We've got the Downy Woodpecker. We've got the American Goldfinch. The species just keep piling up. Let's see, the Eastern Bluebird. Uh, so that's six species already. Yeah, okay, and more to come. I remember looking out there. Oh, there's one of those lemon yellow American goldfinches. I'm so glad that he decided to show off his spring plumage. The bird garden sticker. Huh? Leave a comment if you'd like to get a hold of some bird garden stickers for yourself. I bet we can work something out. I may start a sticker jam. Okay, I know, do we still have someone behind the pillar feeder there? We had the downy woodpecker and a beautiful male goldfinch over on that pillar. Yeah, so the heat, the birds, they're not bothered by the heat. That um, what What's the thing, the capistan or whatever that, that causes the heat and the pepper, the birds don't mind. But I've got some videos of mammals that will try this. And as soon as they lick they smell it and they know it might be hot. And as soon as their tongue touches it, they're wiping off their tongue. In the winter, I had a squirrel jump off the platform into the snow and start licking the snow. And the, there's a water feature next door. And if the mammal's mouths are really hot, they can just go get a drink. I'm not trying to harm the mammals. We're just trying to deter them from eating the bird food. So right now we've got, it looks like three American goldfinches, a beautiful male cardinal, and uh, Carolina chickadee. So we've got three species on the feeder at the same time during the slowest part of the day for bird feeding. I love this feeding station and our birds do also. And it's that time of year. I don't know if these are the birds that kept us company all winter or if we're changing the inventory due to migration because it's time for some of the winter birds to start leaving and we have already seen some of the spring birds arrive. Last week, we had a brown thrasher in the feeder, first time uh, this season. We did have them in the yard several times back in the fall. So I knew they were common to the neighborhood, but I don't think we'd seen one actually in the feeder tray before. Okay, so if you've got any questions about the food, how we feed the birds, how we've rigged the feeders, um, what damage a bear can do to your bird feeding station, and maybe how to prevent that, make sure you leave comments. I'll get back to those as soon as I can. 
If you're watching this live, feel free to drop questions in the chat. We'll take care of those just as soon as you post them. Uh, we've still got a couple of American goldfinches there in the feeder. And it, it we started at this stream um, 20 minutes ago. So we've got a good 10 minutes of a uh, bird birding checklist to go. I think we've got a pretty good checklist going. Let's see if I can recall. There's that Cardinal bag. Yeah, we've got the Cardinal, the Eastern Bluebird, the American Goldfinch, the Downy Woodpecker, the Carolina Chickadee. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, we need to get a couple more on our list before we throw in the towel here. Even if it's slow, we want a little bit uh, more on our checklist than that. And I think what I'll do, this is our first checklist, how to identify birds daily checklist. I think what I'll do um, is, I, I think, okay, I may, I may make a cameo appearance in this video because I was thinking the bird diversity uh, isn't showing up in the video that we're going to talk about during the live stream. So I did go out heads up. I did go out and add some seed and sure enough, the three tray feeder had only crumbs in it and the tray feeder had, um, just a few scattered seeds. So I did, I, this may be the time where I'm pouring some seed and I flush the birds, and I go out and add seed. Maybe not. I don't know. We also have hawks in the area. Oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yours truly. Look at that. Just dust. They ate what was in there. Good job, birds. Yeah, I'm not too careful. You can see some seeds falling down there. The doves and the sparrows enjoy that. I don't, I don't do it on purpose. If it falls, it falls, because I like to keep the birds on camera view for you. <laughs> So we don't put any food on the ground on purpose, but it happens. We don't have to be too careful, but I do like for the birds to be up in the tray feeder where you can see them. Yeah, if you've got any questions, again, we're happy to talk about this. We're learning. We're learning together. Um, I've, everywhere I go, I notice that bird watching is a, such a multi-billion dollar economic impact that more and more people are getting into, this is the wild delight. I've used products of theirs before, and this is a, well, there you go, free take one. And it's a very nice little catalog full of information. I don't know how you get this. I don't remember where I got it. I'm sure it was an outlet for their, I'm not showing it very well. But the point is, there's lots of information like this available. I grab it every chance I get because I'm learning. I love to go bird watching. I've been bird watching for two decades. Uh, I've had this feeding station, as you see it, for less than a year. Uh, I've had a bird feeding area in our yard for over a year, but it's slowly, it's never, it's never been a constant. It's been a process of learning what's best for us to service and maintain and enjoy the birds and the, the bird's preferences being met. This is where we've ended up. I don't see this system changing very much. Uh, it's very similar to what you'll see Cornell University um, use at their uh, sapsucker woods ornithological lab. And the, it, it's just functional. At, you can already tell. Worst time of the day, birds love it. Okay, here we go. That didn't take long. The Northern Cardinals theme. Thank you for seed in that three tray feeder. Where have you been? Here comes a titmouse. That's a new one. Tufted titmouse, new for our list today. Very typical of the tufted titmouse. Take a seed, go someplace and eat it. Come back and get another seed. Uh, that happens more often than seeing the bird hang out and eat the seed uh, on camera. Also has already been featured in a how to identify video. If you're interested in identification tips on the tufted titmouse, you'll find that in the uh, video catalog. I, we don't have one specifically for the downy woodpecker, but we do have a comparison video. There's the tufted titmouse again. He is eating. Notice how he holds the seed down with his foot 
and then breaks it apart with his beak so that he's just taking small bites. Oh, so cool. He's showing off his orange flank there. Right under his wing, you can see he turns orange. And there's a really ornate song sparrow. Now the checklist is getting larger now. That's a song sparrow. And man, what a delightful song he has. I mean, appropriately named. You can Google um, song sparrow song and you'll see what I mean. This guy's singing three-part harmony and he's a one-man band. There's the titmouse again. The titmouse said, yeah, I was waiting on that seed in the tray feeder. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Actually, I think there are two titmice out there today, just like the chickadees. So they may be swapping positions on the tray feeder when you just see one at a time. Beautiful lemon yellow, black capped, black wing, white wing bar on that American goldfinch male, top tray of the three tray feeder. Again, appreciating the seeds, titmouse, in and out, in and out. Grab a seed, see you later. Don't want to be seen in one spot. Um, song sparrow is like, um, you know, I like to feed on the ground, but the seed is just so easy to get in this tray feeder. I'm just going to get as much as I can and still fly, and then I'll be back later. Great bunch of birds. Why don't we... I don't know if we're going to get the 10 species, Northern Cardinal, Eastern Bluebird, Carolina Chickadee, American Goldfinch, Downy Woodpecker, Tufted Titmouse, Song Sparrow. Now, I know there are a couple more regulars that are likely to show up. We might get the 10 species. There's the Titmouse again. He's on to something. He sees something he likes there. Let's see. I want to get closer to that. Goldfinch. There we go. A little better. All right. Yeah, we've got the, the brilliant goldfinch. We've got the ornate song sparrow. See the barring on the side of that song sparrow? Striped head, streaked back. Male cardinal dropping in again for another bite. And then streaking on the side. If that song sparrow were to turn around, you'd see the chest is also streaked with a brown spot in the center of the chest. We call it the pendant. Oh, there's a new one. There's a white crowned sparrow juvenile, and there's the white crowned sparrow adult. You can see the differences in, the, in another juvenile. Two juveniles, one adult. The white crowned adult has a beautiful white and black striking, striking helmet, we like to call it. It just, my wife says it looks like a race car driver. It's just fun to watch. And these little guys, uh, their, their stripes are really in the process of turning white, they've been with us all winter and they were very buffy, just light brown. And now they're, they're tan and turning white in some areas. So there was a, there was a new bird, the white crowned sparrow. Now in our area, the white crowned sparrow isn't nearly as common as the white throated sparrow. So we're very fortunate in that we get the white crowned sparrow as a regular, they've been here all winter. They don't nest here, so they're not going to be here one day. I'm glad you got to see them. And oh my goodness, there's a special character. The white-breasted nuthatch. Look at that acrobat. Look at that. Yeah, one of the most watched videos on the channel. And there's a downy woodpecker joining it on the same pillar feeder. One of the most watched videos on the Bird Garden channel is one with a thumbnail that's titled he was inverted, and it's about the white-breasted nuthatch. What a clown. The nuthatches are the only birds in North America, maybe the world, that can walk down a tree. The woodpeckers can walk up. The nuthatches can walk up and down. So if you see a bird head down walking down a tree, it's one of the nuthatches. And the one we were just looking at there is the white-breasted nuthatch. Did that take us to 10 Northern Cardinal, Eastern Bluebird, Carolina Chickadee, American Goldfinch, Downy Woodpecker, Tufted Titmouse, Song Sparrow, White Crown Sparrow, White Breasted, Nuthatch. Uh, we're getting close, if not. Okay. So let's see. Well, I don't know. I'm to... Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, this is the last of our previously recorded clips 
Um, and it's, we're probably only going to get a couple minutes of this last clip. We've got a downy woodpecker. Uh, can't, is that the, I don't see the red spot. Yeah, that's the female. We've seen the male with the red spot on the back of the head. And there you go. There's the female, no red spot. Active little birds, friendly. Again, they've been here all winter. We're happy to have them. There is the juvenile white crowned sparrow. So now he's got white stripes, but the, the black portion of the stripes hasn't turned black yet. It's just a, a rich, deep, dark brown. And there again is the Carolina chickadee. This is an outstanding scene. There's the female cardinal, much brown, very drab in comparison to the male uh, Carolina chickadee coming back in on the three tray feeder. Uh, this is a very active feeding station. This is, there's the male down. You can see now the, the red on the back of the head. Yeah. So at, a lot of times when I'm in the field birding at this time, after 11 o'clock, the birds are like roosting. They're like taking an after lunch nap. They're not out. They're not about. They're, they're difficult to find. But at this feeding station, we still get what I call, even though it's very busy, I call it light traffic because in the morning and the evening, this thing is slammed. We see birds staging above the feed uh, uh, on top of the pole and the fence and in the yard, they're staging. It's like there's some sort of a air traffic control going on out there to keep everybody cool with each other on the feeder while there's such heavy traffic. I, I think they're once they get accustomed to this feeding area being safe, if you can provide like there's a Carolina wren, another species to our list that took us to 10, I believe uh, the Carolina wren is very common residential bird here. They definitely nest in the yard, but if you can provide a safe space, maybe 10 feet clear around your bird feeder, if the, if the birds feel safe, then they feel less threatened by each other and you can get, more diversity at the feeder uh, at the same time. If the birds are stressed, um, you might have more birds near the feeder than you do in the feeder. I don't know what that was that flew by. It was going so fast. I think we still have one American goldfinch on the three tray feeder. We've got the, we can now see the undersides. It's warm colors of that Carolina wren. Really cool call. That Carolina Wren sings a song, which we turn into a mnemonic of tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle. Uh, sometimes when I'm leading field trips, the younger participants will say cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. <laughs> That's great. Okay. We listen, we've been bird watching now for uh, over a half hour at the bird garden, YouTube, bird feeding station. There's still activity out there. I clicked over while I was off screen and looked at the live feeding station. It's still nuts out there. Um, since I, I disturbed them by installing camera equipment, then I disturbed them again by adding food. And that was after 11 o'clock. And now after one o'clock, it's, it's Grand Central Station. I hope you'll go check out the live stream, the Bird Garden YouTube channel, 24-7 feeding station uh, live stream. I'm so happy to be able to offer that. I'm glad you can enjoy it. But to be honest, I did it for me. We love to, wherever we go, take our cell phones with us and check in on our feeding station. It's a lot of fun. But we're so happy to be able to share it too. I hope you enjoy it like we do. There's the female downy woodpecker. Beautiful, perfect light, good capture there. I'm glad we've got that. I'm going to keep that on file. Yeah. And I, I hope that you'll participate in the channel. I think a birding community is a great community to be a part of. If there's a bird you'd like to know more about, don't hesitate to ask. Don't be shy. We love talking about birds around here. And I can remember a day when I didn't know any of the birds. So there's not going to be uh, any. Uh, there's not going to be any shaming or shunning of of new birders. We want to be very inviting and inclusive, 
especially to new birders. This is a wonderful opportunity to get closer to nature, to let nature uh, enhance your life even more than it already does. I mean, I think nature does that for everyone, whether they recognize it or not. And once you begin to recognize it, at least in my case, and I believe it so strongly, uh, obviously I'm an advocate for sharing, it's a lifestyle enhancement. To see the birds are awesome. To know the names of the bird, make it special. There's an actual connection there. And then once you know the name of the bird, then you start learning some nuances about its behavior uh, or just facts in general. And I think then that's when Here's a soft sale. This is a soft sale. Maybe that you get more uh, more concerned about their habitat, and it's okay if you don't. But if you do, then you start thinking about how can I make my yard more attractive to more birds. And so we we have um, registered our yard as a wildlife habitat, and we've taken several steps in order to do that, but it includes providing shelter for the birds, providing housing for the birds, providing food and water for the birds, as well as not doing some things or reducing some things. And again, you don't have to be overboard on this stuff. There's things you can do to enjoy the birds to make your life better without doing without, without reducing your life. It doesn't always require reduction. That's enough about that. I'm not trying to sell you on the idea of conversation, but I am trying to say I love birds and I know why I've got a long list. We'll talk about that one day. And I hope you love this live stream, the um, daily checklist. What an idea. I, pre I record the birds. I download them. We come and do a live stream and then the video is uploaded as a regular video. So if you're watching on the replay, thank you very much. But you can learn just as much from the replay. You don't have to be here during the live stream in order to get the uh, edutainment. The birds are going to be just as beautiful on the replay, and the information is going to be exactly the same. So no matter how you're consuming this, thank you very much. I appreciate you. It's about the viewer. If you weren't watching, we wouldn't be creating. So thanks for being here. I look forward to sharing some more of this type of thing with you, and I do look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments, check out the links I'm going to put in the description immediately following this live stream. And until the next time, let's go bird watching.